on how to eh, or better yet search for a wheelchuck and what are you doing uh searching for a wheelchuck but my trailer is full of this like mulch stuff so that bad boy is right there i can see it we're close that bad boy's buried hey if anybody needs like uh good soil uh and live in Vegas, come grab this, cause I don't need any more. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Banger! Banger. Oh. What you digging in there for? Uh, uh, new jack stand. Cause Billy all scump here don't have none. Put it on up. Okay. Are these those cheap ones? No. These are sixty bucks. Sixty doll hairs. Yeah. What were you thinking? The little, the other ones weren't tall enough. I was gonna, I was like, oh, cool. Jack Where'd you buy these at? AutoZone. AutoZone for sixty doll hairs. With tax. Look, that looks, that looks good. Alright. Looks reliable. Ah, looks jank. Alright. Let's get, let's kick into that intro though. What's up, oh. Overlanders? Today we're gonna install the Airlift 1000 Helper Springs airbags on the rear end of our fourth gen 4Runner Hawk. Per day muscle. <laughs> really? Nah. I was gonna say, I was like, what the heck? Hey, that looks like a good height. Think so? Yeah. I'd say I'd just leave it right there. Might as well. What's so up? there's two different ways kind of doing this. We have either no matter what we have to cut this this bump stop in the spring here. And we can either get our saw right here in between the spring or pull the spring out, pull the bump stop down, and then cut it, you know. Um, the other thing is there's a hole down here that we're technically supposed to make bigger. Okay, now that we got the wheels off, the next step is to disconnect the panhard bar, the shocks, and maybe the sway bar, so. We'll get started on that right now. Okay, so your shock mounts should be 17 millimeter. So the pan hard bar is a 19 millimeter. You know it's getting serious when Dylan takes off his crocodile Dundee hat. <laughs> that bad boy's gonna be. <laughs> All right, time for the other side. Yeah, so so we we unscrewed the shock mount. We tapped it off with the hammer. 
Make sure to use, you use a rubber mallet or a piece of wood or something so you're not metal on the shock. Um, we disconnected the pan hard bar. That's all you need to disconnect. We have, I have the, the, the sway bar back here, but we were able to do this without taking it, without disconnecting it. So all we, all we needed to do was Steven push down a little bit right here, and that gave me just enough space to pull that spring out. So now what we're gonna do is, because I have one inch lift springs on the rear, normally you'd cut this off all the way back here, but we're gonna leave one on. Um, and that'll accommodate for the extra inch of lift I have on these springs when the airbag is sitting up against it. So, so we gotta drill this hole out a little bit more to make some space for the air hose to come through. Um, and then we can put the airbags in and start uh, putting this all back together. Holy smoke. Want me to give, give it a go? Yeah. That's our one. Yeah. Uh, Steven's giving me a little break. Look, it's smoking. Is it? It's smoking. It's it is smoking. Did you get it? getting hot <laughs> and it's like melting back together <laughs> oh it smells so bad Ready? almost there oh. oh gotta clean that up a little bit though. hey you know what you could use this for <laughs> that's yeah, about that's as good as gonna get <laughs> While Dylan's drilling the hole behind me, I'm gonna work on that second bump stop. So. So next, we gotta get the airbag into the spring. Make sure the uh, little air nipple is facing down in the spring. Because that's where the hose comes through is at the bottom. Right. And it all makes sense in a minute. Yeah. So first thing I'm going to do um, <laughs> is get some soap on here. <laughs> It'll make it easy to get this, get it in the spring. I'll take that off. And then, uh, and then put it in. Definitely a tight fit, but it'll go. There we go. Once you get it in past that first bit, it goes easier. All right, so then don't push it down all the way yet, because you need to work in around that um, with the hose. Right. Next, we're gonna put the top back on and then get the spring inside. So this will be, this will require two people. Yep, get so, the tripod. Let me get the tripod. freaking chilly yeah. yeah all right so now we're getting ready to drill the hole for the Schrader valve which we're gonna put right here in the bumper the door can close and there's still gonna be plenty of room in there um, it's not gonna hit it's a good spot so when we want to air up we just you can have easy access from that from right there from that corner right here so so we're gonna get this one installed cut the hose to length and then see if the other side will either route it to next or right here or put it over there on that side sweet had like limited drill bits to choose from. Okay. Yes. Dang, now you're leaking gas. <laughs> Alright, explain where you went. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you can kind of see. You can see. So we went in through the front of the axle. 
and that comes up through this hole that we drilled out. And you don't have to drill right there. It's just like an open spot. Yeah. So it all comes all right through. So then next, make sure you remember this little safety patty, dude. Yeah, because because last time we didn't, and it was a pain in the butt to take it off on the other side. Then you need the clamp. Then we gotta get the clamp on there. So now we're just prepping the hose with that clamp that the kit comes with. I'm gonna push the bag up a little more. Bring that hose back through. A little bit of spit on the old nipple there. Lubrication. Or whatever lubrication you got. in there. Oh. I, I will say oh. that I do like the fact that it is oh. super uh, I think your fingers are tight. stronger than mine. Here. Maybe it's just because I'm so cold. Okay. Yeah? I think so. Yep, all the way to the top. Nice. Okay. Okay, now the clamp goes on. Boom. Just like that. Nice. So then the bag goes down. I'm kind of pulling on the hose a little bit as I bring the bag back down, and that's seated just like that's that. That's a tappy place right there. Nice. Now, uh, hey, where'd you get these uh, these beautiful looking shocks? You no, know, Ibox, baby. Ibox stage one pro lift. It's the best you can get. Okay. And then you just gotta, you know, get the airbags if you're an overlander and have all the extra weight. <laughs> just so you don't have it go under that spring at all. Perfect. You know what I should go grab? Uh, My freaking heater buddy. Oh, Want me oh, to? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, let's grab that heater buddy, yeah? Yeah. Uh, nah? We're going back. We're almost done, dude. You lying? Almost. Done. Small one. And you're gonna be like, "Wow, Steven, that was a really bomb idea." Yeah. And I'm like, "Dang, Dilly, what you know about that?" There you go. Yeah. Can't see it. Oh, well, there it is. Yeah. All right, you routed that hose from the passenger side all the way to the driver's side. Why did you want to do that? I did, the main reason I wanted to do that was to keep the hose away from the exhaust. Um, so that we, this, is, this plastic would melt if it got too close and routing it over here keeps it very far away from it. Um, it also puts both of my fill valves um, right next to each other. So I just fill one, fill the other. I don't have to walk back and forth. It keeps things easy. Um, so now all we got to do is uh, finish a couple zip ties and send uh, it up. Send it up. And that was this hose was just perfect in length. Yeah, it, it. I have maybe six inches extra left over. Run that down, take that up. That's how much extra hose we got. Dang, that's a smiley face. It's enough to make a smiley face. Don't want to ruin the washer. There. We decided not to link these hoses together. We're doing two separate. We don't want them connected. I want to make sure I can fill both airbags individually. But the kit comes with. It does come with that T. The T shape, and it gives you also instructions on how to do the T shape. So you have constant or equal amount of pressure for each bag. 
Which but actually, what's, what's the which benefit? I actually don't like because if you have more weight on one side, it's just gonna squish and push air into the other bag. Which is why I wanna be able to fill both bags exactly. Oh, we have an extra one for the T if we were gonna go. I'm like, why is there an extra clamp? <laughs> Did this and only ended up with three extra bolts in the end. Indeed, Peter, buddy. Look how close that mug is to him. <laughs> the best thing since sliced green onion. I know. If you guys want to get that uh, Mr. Heater Buddy, I'll put a link in the description for that if you guys are interested in checking that out. Dylan, you have, which Heater Buddy do you have? You have like the- I have the Big Buddy. Oh, and that's I right. would actually, for if you're trying to use it in a rooftop tent, I'd actually not recommend the Big Buddy. It's a little bit too big for a tent. This, uh, just the regular heater buddy, that's the way to go. Yeah, because you can put two tanks on yours, right? I can, but I actually usually don't. <laughs> gotcha. That's organic dirt. <laughs> all right, so now all we gotta do is uh, get the pan hard bar and the shocks back on, put the tires on, um, get these things up. Uh, we'll start out at around five PSI, and then uh, we'll lower it down. And then fill her up. A little more. Uh, a little more. All right, there. Oh. <coughs> now it's putting it all back to good. Oh, oh. what the? <laughs> Just give it a good yank, good. Oh, yep, yep. There you go. Okay. Uh, a little more, actually. Every time you push, this gets a little further. Okay. That's good for now. I just wanted to get that. Inflate and then put the wheels on. Inflate to 30 psi. So that's what we gotta do first. That was fast. <laughs> Get some car slide in on there. It's tight. That is tight in there. All right, we're just gonna double check with another gauge that we have 30 pounds of pressure okay. in both bags. 30, exactly. And exactly 30. There Sweet. We so let's lower this thing back down. Move some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, like miles. Miles of room under there? Miles. Sweet. Base you got back in there now. Holy smokes, it's bigger. That's higher. Dude, that's. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, I, I gained all my lift back. Wow. Bro, you were sagging bad yeah. before. We did it. We did it. That's how you install an Airlift 1000 on a fourth gen 4Runner. In about a month, I'll be making a review video on how it handles and feels so I can let you know if you guys should consider doing the same.
If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hitting that bell because it really helps us out. We are Trailbenders Overland. Out. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, do something Yeah, like. like wiggity, 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 wiggity. <laughs> Grab that, and we, I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna pop out. You're gonna pop out. What's up? And you say Overlanders. Overlanders. <laughs> or no, we'll do it afterwards. Like, describe what you're doing and. <laughs> yeah. Ow. That hurt. Did I do too much? <laughs> we're we're gonna test out these new not test it, install. We're gonna install these brand This airlift one thousand. Alright, so you're just gonna take the lead. I'll, I'm gonna just say No, let's hit, hit it one more time. Well let's that I like that. I like this and then I uh, I like that. But then where do we go from there?